you've kind of caught me off guard with this. I didn't expect this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Okay, so this next thing, I'm just going to show you a few natural bodybuilding athletes. Oh, yeah, cool, cool, um, cool. And from a pose, from a coach point of, um, yeah, from a prep coach point of view, what and a, sure. and, a, and a judge, what would you say is a strength and one thing that would be something to improve on? Just one of the one of each, and that is it. Okay, sure. Okay, and if you want, so you can also give. Can you see my screen? Uh, no, no, not afraid, okay. not, 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 no, 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 yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay, it's coming up. It's just uh, just loading. Let's see. You've kind of caught me off guard with this. I didn't expect this one. I'll try oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just doing something. Oh, here we go. Get rid Something's of... happening. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. Yes. Yes. Mr. yes. Yeah, I, I know so you're we've got we've got this. We'll just put Kanye in the background. All right. So yeah, we've got Mr. Movator. I saw him at WNBF, and hopefully one day again I get to stand next to him. Uh, so let's look at let's look at this because this is recent. Um, so this is this was fairly recent, so you could actually have uh yeah. in the back of your mind what 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 stands out to you strengths weaknesses. That's training. I think this should be fine. Uh, he loves adding pictures to the background. I'm trying to find one of him. Hopefully, this is okay. Let's look at this one because this is a pretty decent picture from the front. What would you say? Okay, where where to start on um on uh, on this one? So, Mister Motivator here, I I would say probably and his front double bicep shot. This is a good shot for him because he's got a very nice X frame. Uh, and he's got great arms as well. His conditioning is good here. I wonder if his conditioning was better this year compared to um, the previous year or or vice versa. Not 100% sure on that one. But I think with his legs here, you probably stand with his legs a little bit closer together. You get a better um, X-frame stance in there. I mean, you can see it in this shot here where his legs are a little bit closer together. It gives him yeah. a little bit more aesthetic. But these are very aesthetic shots for me. It looks looks really, really good. Um, and yeah. stand up against... Um, the guys who are in the um the top of the open class and top of the pro class so you, you really need a bit more thickness um in your physique front to back that that really what makes the difference but that's a pretty strong shot for him i would say the front double bicep yeah you want to tilt a little bit further forward this this is a good example that one you just had up there um, which one this uh, one um, this one I think it was when he was on the NEC stage. Yeah, this one yeah. here. So if you look at this shot here, um, what's going to really help him here right, is if you look at his waistline and his lower lumbar spine, you can see he's kind of leaning back a little bit. Yeah. And what would really help him in this shot is, it's not that he's probably leaning back, it's probably just the position of the, the camera in this yeah. shot. Yeah. And yeah. Then the camera's kind of not the way. So what you really want to do in that shot is you want to lean forward just a touch, and it's the same with all the shots, but you only lean forward from the lower lumbar spine. Some guys, what they end up doing as well is they, they sit back on their hips and they push their glute to that back curtain behind them. Yeah. And that often doesn't help with that shot either. So you just want to lean forward a little bit uh, in that one. And then at the upper thoracic region, you want to make sure that that's tilted upward as, uh, as well. Um, I think it's unfair to be critical of this particular shot, though, because if you look at some of the other ones when he's doing that front double bicep, you can see he's got a lot more thickness across the pecs. I don't think that that's a particular weakness of his. I think it's maybe just that uh, shot there. I recognise you in that one there, Davidji. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this one, which one? This one or this one? Yeah, oh, yeah, this that one. one yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. That was that was a good day. Okay, let's move on to the next person. Who you, you were good got... as well, man. You were good. You just need to uh, get a little bit leaner. I I I wanna I wanna get to being a bit leaner and then I should I'll be back on there. We've got uh Ade, Mr. Reflex. He doesn't post too much of his physiques, mainly reels and training videos. Uh but what let's see if I can find a picture. You had a very it. symmetrical physique, I remember, and um I seem to recall he, he took the um the heavyweight. I think um, yeah he did, yes he did. He did. And he's he got a gra good. he's got I like his physique so much. The, the thing that was was hurting him was just he, he wasn't conditioned enough. That was the thing. Again, he's got a very symmetrical physique. Um, nothing on his physique um, stands out as being a, as a particular weakness. 
Um, maybe he could do a little bit more calves, I would say. Perhaps slightly bigger triceps, but he's very symmetrical. Um, yeah. I can't remember what he was like from the, the pack, but it was mainly just the, the conditioning was something that he needed to kind of really work on. Okay. But again, it's once he decides to go uh, any of the heavyweights, and if he can win the heavyweight class and then uh, move on to the, the sort of higher levels, the thing that all the guys need is it's just thickness. It's just getting okay. that front back fitness in the, in the physique. Okay. Uh, yeah, see that's... Where is that? Yeah, that was yeah, that was a pretty decent. But I think this is last year. So yeah, okay. Yeah, next very person. Very good very good next player. person is Will. Condition there. Yeah, Will's very symmetrical as well. Any weaknesses and strengths and one strength, one one room for improvement. Oh, he's he's got great arms. Um, definitely great arms. Looks like he do a bit more calf, maybe a bit more hamstring, but um, okay. great arms. Okay, great arms, calves, and hamstrings. Okay, it's very symmetrical. As well. I, I expect if Will just keeps doing what he's doing, he will um over time. He will grow. Yeah, he's 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 really good. Um, so he, yeah, I like, he's I like right him. Class, so I, he, yeah. he probably just needs to keep doing what he's doing. The main man. We've got Keishi. Um, lots of muscle, but poor symmetry. Um, very blocky. And again, it probably <laughs> did well in the, the amateurs, but once you're competing against guys in the pros, it, the guys have just got much better symmetry. So I think if if he wants to sort of really excel in the, in the pro divisions against your your like your Nathan Williams, your Dave Kays, even your yeah. um, your Ben Lloyd's, then it's the symmetry is things that he's got to work on. And um, that back shot, for example, he, he overextends. And that one there, which which doesn't doesn't help him, but I mean, huge amount of mass. That that's obviously his um his forty. I'm not sure if he had the same level of conditioning, um, this year as he'd had in previous years, or if it was just the case that now that he's standing against guys with better conditioning, that he was looking slightly softer. I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, sorry, but yeah, I was listening. In my audio, my visual went for a second. Um, in terms of symmetry, can he change anything? Aesthetic, he's not very tall, so like yeah. his best thing is can he win the sim- can he win the muscularity round? Because he's always going to struggle in the um in the symmetry round. Now that he's in the round, uh, he's going to have to go up against guys that have just got better better symmetry than than him. And uh, I mean that the last guys you all showed, uh, you showed me on there, they, they would all beat him in that symmetry round. But uh, he's got that thickness that the, the other guys don't have, so he can maybe do better in the, the muscularity round. Um, okay. good, good arms. Yeah. Good, arms, um, good hamstrings. Legs, um, it, yeah, yeah, good good hamstrings as well. Um, just the, the, the waist. He can pose better. If he poses better, um, that's that's the thing that will make a difference. Because, I mean, clearly he knows how to train. Yeah. He's getting results from that. So he just needs to he'll keep adding mass. Um, and if he can, like I say, if he can pose better, I think that's going to help his symmetry. Or if he poses in a way to sort of try and emphasize his um, symmetry, that that will help him. Do you think, in any way, not to take away from it, but do you think the heavy lifting is affecting his symmetry in any? Well, it would be to some degree, but do you think it's a major factor or not? Nah, I'm not not at all. Not I mean, at all. Okay. I, I um. I mean, a lot of guys put me on a pedestal and said that I'm a classic bodybuilder and a great example of that. And I did strongman for years. Like, okay. I, another good example is, um, Steve McDonald, uh, one of my old time training partners, a lot of similar style of training. I, I think it just really is your skeleton structure and your insertions that make a difference in the way that you pose. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I like, I like, I really do respect the way he trains and I respect his mindset as a, Bodybuilder, and I've I've only met him once, so I really do like him. Next, we have <laughs> James. Um, he's had a good year this year so far. Yeah, he's done, he's done really well. He's done. He's I think done the really well. the worlds the worlds was the first competition he's lost since since he started bodybuilding. I guess because when he did the 20, 19, 2020, he won that, but then he had he got injury and then he was out and then COVID. And then he came back this year and he did South, uh, uh, British, British South, 
and then world and world was his first um thing so props to him because yeah but yeah, yeah but okay he, he competed against guys though in that one that was the big difference so he was competing against men compared to competing against against yeah, juniors juniors um, yeah that's which James has got a very good physique. Um, again, competing at the the worlds, I, I think the the thing that James needs to work on is um, it's just the mindset and going in there and having the confidence in yourself. Uh, you I noticed say, that as well, did you? I think I think that's I don't know if that's how he is or that's how he is on like like game day or show day. But when we was at the BNBF as well, it was the same mentality kind of thing and I think I don't think it's more of like he doesn't believe in himself I think well it could be but I think is I can't explain it like he's confident he, he knows he's done the work already because it's not a question of the work but for some reason he's just not he's not happy until the you know the fat lady sings kind of thing if that makes sense which still in his in the way affects his um is confident not confident is it confidence he said is uh mentality in, on, on on a day well i i think when i seen him the days before the the competition he looked a lot sharper and then i think he just got stressed um to to be honest with you with with the stage and and he wasn't as sharp as he could have been just because i think he was stressed so i mean for him he's he's got everything that he, he needs so all the muscles there again he'll just get thicker over time um, I think it'll just be a case of and just like sort of refining that that mindset, and he'll do some great work, I'm sure, with Josh to be able to to get that down. Yeah, props to Josh that, as well. Happen. What what? So in terms of strengths and room for improvement, what what are you what would you say for James? I, again, I I think it's the main it's the mindset. I think that's going to be his biggest thing that he needs to improve on because he's he's very symmetrical. Again, it's like yeah. all the guys that you've sort of you've brought up so far, they, they've not got a lot of holes or weaknesses in their physiques. They're, they're already kind of where they need to be. They've got their own unique silhouettes in, in their bodies already. I mean, maybe a little bit more in the glutes there when you're looking at that shot. You could do a little bit more size uh, in that one. Um, probably the front lat spread's a, a shot that you could improve on as, as well, I seem to think. Recall the front lat spread? Really? I think so. I think Hold on, that one's just... not as good compared to some of the, the other ones that he had. Uh, he had a oh yeah this yeah I really liked his front lat spread. Oh, I, mean, I could easily be mistaken. <laughs> oh, oh yeah no I mean to my to my from my I think his front I like I really do like his front lat spread because his yeah no his I, quads, I, I take it back. yeah I yeah take it back. Cause I, I thought I so because good. I thought that was one of his strongest I think I think the Are side you, chest Peter, actually if he's got his uh, his fellow countryman his compatriot behind him yeah he's, Jack he's better than um than than Jack's there. And that one, yeah. and it looks at Jack you've got there as well. I think if Jack could pose better, that would really help him in terms of um, his own bodybuilding placing. And, and Jack's kind of got the same sort of issue that the, the James has got. If he can sort of bring it, bring it on the day and not get overstressed, that would probably help him quite a lot. Yeah, okay, that makes and Just quickly, as a posing coach, which of these four back let spread not in terms of muscularity or size or nothing just in terms of posing um which one do you think brings the back out more i think james is hitting it the best james isn't is that because he's james upright he's and not best, leaning yeah. back i mean he, he could lean just maybe a slight touch in that lower back and that might help a little bit and um, the, the angle's not ideal but i think james is doing it the, the best there um in that particular shot okay yeah i'm um, biased though of course because i helped james <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I like. I really like James. He's got a good. It's it's. You know what? It's so frustrating because he has the the mentality to keep pushing after such an injury and train and stick to diet and do all this and train yeah. hard. And then for some reason, you'd expect him to, um, you'd expect him to come on shoulder. Like I've literally, you know, I've won off the stage. This is basically me showing, but. It's like that's when he really needs to really like kind of sip a pre workout or something maybe, <laughs> but um yeah you know because I'm I've, I I saw him at BNBF and I was just thinking bro did you see everyone on stage you're literally like like what more do you want you know but he was still not he was still not certain um but you know if we look at the positive he stays hungry so but I mean I'm I'm a fan like he's a very good bodybuilder he's he's, he's very good. And it'll just get better and better. 
He's I far better than I ever was as a, as a junior bodybuilder. That's <laughs> I say the same, man. He's only two years younger than me. <laughs> but yeah, he, okay. It, okay cool. well, well, a lot of these things, it's whether the guys want it or not and they want to keep going. Um, while they be in the sport in five years time, it's it's one of them ones. Yeah, that's that's really the that's the main. Yeah, that's that's another conversation for another day. Uh, next person would be Sam, Sam Flex. Um, I don't oh, think you've Sam seen him. Sam Flex. Actually. You've seen him on. You've seen him at PCA. Uh, PCA. It was the universe. Uh, I'm gonna because that was where I came. Universe, I was at the PCA universe. Was did he compete at the? Yeah, he did compete because I went to go watch him compete. I wouldn't go I, there. I went to that show, yeah. I went to that Let show. me see. I think was this it? Yeah, again, it, it looks like again he's got another very good symmetrical physique. Um, looks like he just needs a bit more thickness. That that ultimately looks like um what he could do with, but very symmetrical. Uh, okay. Maybe a little bit more calf there. This is uh, what it looks like. Uh, maybe a bit more in a hamstring, but yeah, good, good body build. You can see it very symmetrical. What, what would you say? Uh, oh, uh, in terms of weakness, let's find a recent physique. Um, I, I feel it's it's difficult to be critical of of the conditioning. Um, um, yeah. So if we're if we're talking about um, symmetry, and he's already, what would you say as a if you was his coach? What would you say the next? Uh, room for improvement is. I mean, again, look, looking at him maybe a little bit more in the chest, but it's, it's hard to see from from these particular from pictures, particular shots. Okay, yeah, he's he's really. I'm rooting for him and James as well. They both. I think yeah, they both like, really in it. A lot of the guys that you're you're showing me here are maybe a bit more calf there, like I say on, on that one, are like I say, um, very, very symmetrical, and and that's what makes good bodybuilders is uh, the fact that they yeah. are symmetrical. I've, I've only got the up, that's what makes them a threat. I've only put the good ones here because yeah. Uh we spoke about Jack just briefly, but um in if we just gave give him his own spotlight in terms of shape wise, physique wise, what, what are you looking at or what stands out? Loads of muscle, lo loads and loads of muscle, just could do with posing it better. Like e even this shot here, I mean you could do with tilting forward just a, a little bit more. I'd probably bring the hands a little bit higher up. Uh, I'd probably rotate the wrists a little bit more on on that one, um, and try and get the elbows a little bit further to the side, um, like probably stand a little bit wider as well with the the feet ever so slightly, as as well. He's just got loads of muscle. That that's his. Yeah, his, he seems to get that's in condition as well. But the, the yeah, stage does. condition doesn't seem to be as good as the off stage conditioning, and I wonder if that's like. This is him at the world. I don't think he looked that sharp on stage because I think he maybe went away and either did something or. I see what you're saying about this. I could, I would have him lean forward a bit more here because I can't. Yeah, really I see... think there's a bit more over it, too much extension going going on here. I mean, there's some base poses that you teach people how to do, and then you have to alter them from individual to individual. And this this looks like he's been taught to do it by someone whose physique it suits somebody to do it like that rather than. Mm. Uh, Something that's been adapted for himself, but good, good arms on uh, good on arms. there. Okay, um, so good, good body builder. Like I say, if there's if he can work on his, his sort of stage conditioning rather than his off stage conditioning, off -stage and conditioning. Like stress <laughs> or, you know, it's uh, the complete opposite for me because off off season I'm so much more conditioned, and then yeah. and then for some reason I come on stage and I'm not as conditioned. And it's like okay, cool, I just. I just wait. To qualify, <laughs> I mean to um work on his like in the gym conditioning. He was almost looking better the days before the contest than rather. Yeah, yeah, than yeah. Himself. So I, I wondered if it's just stress or if it's he's doing something the the days before which aren't helping his his physique. This was it. Okay, so whilst we're on there, let's just look at um weight loss in general. Uh, when it comes to weight loss. What's your what's your approach in it in terms of or what comes to mind when when you when the client says oh, I want to lose weight like what are, what are the first indicators that come to mind? Well, it depends on the goal. Ultimately, at the end of the day, like I mean, how much weight do you need to lose? Are you trying to lose weight for for a competition or is this just like a kind of a summer cut up from here? And um, if you're talking about a competitive bodybuilder, um, if they've done it before, that's great. 
And if they were in shape before, that's great as well. Because then you've got a reference point and you're going to know how much weight they're going to have to lose. So if if someone competes at 80 kilos and uh, their off-season weight's 100 kilos and you're in really good shape at 80 kilos, then you know they've got 20 kilos to lose, at least. Mm. Yeah. So that's the sort of thing that you're sort of thinking about to start with. Then you're going, right, okay, well, how much time have they got? Because um, I know to lose 20 kilos, then I'm going to probably lose about half a kilo per week because I might get some quick initial weight loss and a greater per week. But as I get closer and closer to the contest, it's going to go down to half a kilo a week, 0.3 kilos per week. And sometimes you don't want to force it because people will lose muscle mass um, if you try and push it too too much. So you've got to factor in that and you've got to factor in, well, is there enough time from, from there? And then what else is going on in their life? Is it realistic for them to to even do this in the first place, because people will tell you they want to lose weight by X date, but then they'll also say to you, like, okay, I've got a holiday to go on, um, I've got my sister's wedding, I've got a stag doing, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> is this a goal or is this not a real goal? So you're factoring in um, those things, and and one thing I'll say, man, is, like, I you showed all guys there, right? I work with both male and female clients, and I will tell you that male clients are easy to work with, like, because they'll lose weight, right? They'll just lose weight, Female clients, they are not easy to to get the weight off because <laughs> their body will just stop giving up weight and uh, you'll have the menstrual cycle you'll have to factor in along the way. The, they'll hold water and they'll not hold water. It just becomes much more complicated than that. So does that okay. answer your question? Yeah, that, that okay, because it opens up conversation for women. When it comes to women, yeah. what have you worked with women who were previously pregnant and then they went in to kind of lose weight? Have you have you worked with those kind of people, or if so, what kind of advice would you give for people postnatal looking to lose weight? Because someone That's randomly messaged, yeah, because yeah, someone she she she's a friend of my she's the mother of my videographer, and she just said, "Oh, you're the guy that you know does gym." I was like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. And she was like, "I've just you know had ever since my baby. I'm trying to." I was like, "Whoa, that's never that's never my level of expertise. If I'm honest, I'm gonna have to try to refer you to someone. I was gonna refer to Joshua. Um, so." even harder for postnatal women in terms of tips what would you give um from your experience nutrition training uh would benefit postnatal women to to lose weight i mean it's it's a very good question very good question the first thing again you've got to realize is that women are not just small men right that's that's your first thing you've got to sort of factor in here and if you went on to the nhs website you'd find official stances from the um school of midwifery and the school of gynecology and obstetrics you could find weight loss advice and activity advice for women postnatally as well and you can do courses on this specialized uh, around this when i used to teach this sort of stuff from um the the university's perspective you've got to sort of factor in well it depends right okay depends how severe the uh the pregnancy was what you did leading up to the pregnancy and uh, what you're used to doing what sort of birth you had because if you had a cesarean section compared to a usual um and neutral birth and um, then then it's two completely different things because you've got to factor in right okay well you might not be able to use your abdominal muscles correctly for say eight to nine weeks if you've had a cesarean section and that's going to change completely the sort of um prescriptive advice you give someone doesn't it yeah, so, yeah that um, makes a lot sense. of the time it is a piece of trying to make sure that the, the pelvic floor works effectively again in, in that particular case but you've got to also realize that at the same time the the human body is an incredible thing not not least the the, the female body and if they combine a sort of natural birth alongside things like uh, like breastfeeding then your body releases a whole milieu of uh, hormones which helps the body bounce back extremely quickly because that period post birth is a period whereby the, the human body or the female body is extremely fertile for uh, for taking um, on and, and, and becoming pregnant again. So the, the body is an amazing way of bouncing back and making you as... Um, Give birth again. <laughs> as, as possible. And, and you see um, good examples of people like Jessica um, Ennis-Hill and uh, even uh, Serena Williams that in that post 
um, partum period when they've just given birth that they managed to get back to working at extremely high levels, elite athlete levels within 11 months. And that's because estrogen levels are an all-time high and that's a growth hormone for females. So you, you do have to factor in the individual, what sort of pregnancy, et cetera, that they, they've had. Um, nutritionally, you're actually, if you're breastfeeding, you're lactating. So there's a higher energy demand than there otherwise would be from there. So you have to be mindful that, okay, as weight loss and a deficit a good idea if you're doing something like that because you've got to still be producing milk mm. so it might not be the best advice i'm not saying that you need to do um severe calorie deficits though to, to lose weight in that postpartum period it might be a case of maintenance is what needs to happen and actually just doing some activity alongside um having the new child is is going to to make a big difference in terms of pulling everything back into the, the tightness where where it needs to be uh, from from there, does that make sense? It's it's a complicated. That makes sense. It is, it is very it's very complicated, and I'm, that's the main reason why I said no to her asking for my <laughs> for oh, my yeah. 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 <laughs> for sure. Um. Okay. So on losing weight, we've spoken that with postnatal, there's some complexities that would affect that. So what some girls would always want to ask is, you know what can I eat in a day to lose weight? Obviously not to lose weight in that specific day, but what would be an ideal break, um, ideal food they eat? And are you one that prefers intermittent fasting? Say, for example, this is this is a girl. She's completely, you can, whatever situation works with you, you can adapt that situation to her situation. But she wants to lose weight and she's asked you for like a full day eating. Are you going to, you know, use intermittent fasting or you're going to have her eating certain things, breakfast, lunch. So what would be the whole day eating? And just without obviously going too much, but still explaining, what would be a thought process for those uh, intricate moments as to what they, what she ate, what she could, she should eat, yeah. Okay. I mean, in, in terms of weight loss, I mean, the research on this is very clear. And the weight loss research kind of shows that there's a lot of different ways you can do a diet. You can go paleo, intermittent fasting, as you mentioned. You can go high carb, low carb, low fat, um, 5-2, um, caveman, Atkins. You can do all these different sort of things, zone. Um, but they're all about as effective as each other at the end of the day after about six months. So they work, and they all really work really, really well. And the thing that really makes a difference is it's a calorie deficit at the end of the day. And that's the, the big thing that we need to focus on is that so long as we create a calorie deficit, the person should lose weight. The next thing we need to focus on is the person has to also be able to adhere to the diet ultimately. So it's got to be something that someone can actually adhere to and it creates a calorie deficit. And that's about what works best for that person's lifestyle. Um, if you look at any healthy eating advice, then it's just all pretty straightforward. People can do great things just by following things like the Eat Well Guide, the Eat Well Plate. On there. So that is eating things which are high satiating foods, high in fiber. So things like fruits and vegetables, whole grains, high amounts of lean proteins, good healthy fats, dairies in there. So it's about building a diet that looks like that for the, the individual. Um, things that work quite well for people are eating multiple times per day and small meals that avoids them snacking. But you want to try and integrate it alongside um what that person's kind of used to eating at the uh, the moment. So that's the sort of thing that we're, we're trying to do with individuals. And then they need that continuous support. They need that continuous uh, accountability for someone to come in here and say, okay, well, how have you got on this week, Tracy? Uh, okay, you've done really well. Um, okay, what's not gone so well? What can we do about that? What are your ideas? How can we get you through this? What solutions have you got? I've got some of my own ideas. I can tell them if you'd like, um, wow. but I want to know what you <clears throat> Yeah, I can. I can tell. Target. I can. Sorry, before you go into targets, and I can tell you are a a professional coach. It doesn't have to say it in your name. Um, but I think what really made me think that was because I was gonna ask the question, um, based off of what you were saying. What if the client has, you know, let's say she Tracy slipped up, you know, last week, yeah. and then this week again she slipped up. My question was gonna be. How would you deal with that? But then as you was answering that question, you ended up saying something that was very, very important, but you probably wouldn't, you probably know, which was I would ask her, her ideas, which I don't think a lot of coaches do. I would put my hands up as well, 
at the time where I've worked with like friends and people close by in, in the realm that I can help them, I don't know if I've said a hundred percent what ideas do you think? And I'll put my hands up because you, you learn as you as you go. Um but I, I think as a coach or and as a client as well, um you should always remember that um your your ideas or your thought process should be somewhat taken on board as well just like he said you know what's your ideas i have ideas as well do you want me to share them so you're yeah, actually kind of you know opening them up and they might just say they might already know what they need to do but they're not doing it so they would end up saying oh maybe i need to just spend a pound 50 on chocolate this week or this day rather than and then you'd say okay yeah let's do that plus let's add my idea that i was thinking on but i think i think i just wanted to point that out that um clients should have a say and coaches should always um push for clients to have a say but yeah um, yeah, um it's, target it's it's, it's collaborative the, the process i mean ultimately we, we expect people to fall off the bandwagon that that's that's how behavior change works is that people are going to fall off and make mistakes along the way um, and we've got to be sympathetic to that and the main thing is we need to get a on the 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 planet and get them to to follow through and, and let them know it's okay that they can confide in us from, from here. Um, I mean, ultimately, for the individual, it has to matter to them, the goal. And if the goal doesn't matter enough, and it's not in their sort of maybe top one, two or three priorities, then they're not going to achieve the goal because they're going to value eating the chocolate, going out with friends, having a drink, things like that, over of, of weight loss. They might like yeah. the idea of the goal, yeah, but they don't actually value it that highly to, to follow it through. So, so far free, I yeah. think you, one of the things you have to do right from the start is with your client like Tracy is work out does she actually want to do this? Because if she's not actually ready for the change yet, then you you might be able to take her money off or make her a really good plan, get some good coaching for three, four weeks. But when it gets to that that difficult part, um, she's not going to be able to move on with it. So she gets three heels off and that's all she ever manages. Um, when really with our, our guys that you just showed us there and the and yeah. the posing, all of them really need to really be the best bodybuilders they can possibly be, like yourself. So they're not going to deviate from the plan. They're just going to follow it because they know this mm. is going to be the best. And stuff like the chocolate sense. and all that sort of stuff doesn't matter as much to them um, yeah. from, from there. So it, 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 you need targets. That, that was the last thing I was going to come on and say. You set that targets, realistic ones, smart objectives, and then we, we take them on the, the pathway to the goal and try and keep them motivated and accountable. Okay, makes sense. That makes I was sense. gonna. That makes that makes a hundred percent sense. Um, which is why I wanted to ask, uh, my question. Um, so say for example that client has got to the third, fourth week, right? And this is the really the the hard part now. Um, for me, and I would say as well for me, when it comes to clients that kind of fall off, I take it personally because I feel like I'm yeah. not able to do my work, and then it gets frustrating which is why I don't really like coaching because I would I would want to give my all but I've of recently I've decided to become more of a uh reactive coach no an interactive coach rather than a reactive if that makes sense so the more yeah. they give the more I give back if that makes sense rather than giving all and then the third fourth week you know the red light the traffic comes and they go turn left and you know go to the chicken and chip shop in this sense um but with that being said, when it comes to the third, fourth week and it's really getting tough, um, and say it's not the coach's fault, let's say it's a client, I'll do both um, scenarios, and it's a client's fault, how would you um, get them moving that one extra week? What would be like your tactics? Or what has been like an, a previous experience that's worked for you and you try to replicate or you use that to kind of base your model on those three to four weeks? Bearing in mind, bearing in mind that you've already said the reason why they will have that three to four week challenge is because it's not in their top three goals but say they were really kind of motivated but that third to fourth week is how would you move them well the, the, the thing is i mean that's a great question um on on this um i mean the big thing is you've got to make sure you get the right people in the door to start with because someone that's okay. motivated they're, they're going to be able to um continue to follow the process and yeah. you've got to in your sort of time that you're working with them to develop new behavior change patterns of them you because what you're trying to ultimately do is behavior change so you need to learn a new lifestyle and a new way of living and it'll take you about say 20 weeks for that behavior change to become solidified yeah yeah and along the way they're going to fall off like like you're saying so you need to get those patterns in place and um 
motivation wise, like that motivation only lasts for so long, right? Before it has to just become a habit that you just go to the gym. How many times do you go to the gym and you just can't be arsed, but you just go and then yeah. you're in there and you enjoy it? That's because that's just something I can do. Yeah, because we love it. At the end of the day, even though we have those those moments of weakness. Um, so what you need to do is you need to make sure that this is the right goal for them and they have their expectations set. Yeah. And that they know what they're in to try and achieve. And if yeah. um, you're finding that they're constantly falling off the bandwagon, then you've got to sit down with them and, and have the conversations with them like this and be like, okay, so what's going on? Um, why are we not getting to the goal? And you, this is the sort of thing that I think happens with a lot of the coaching that a lot will do is they, they, they try and people please, people please, people please, people please in one direction. And they, they bout the clients for so long. And yeah. then they go in the other direction and then they get a bit pissed off where they're like, okay, you need to work harder. You need to do harder. <laughs> yeah. And then over time, the pendulum swings somewhere back to the middle. Yeah. And as you get better at coaching, you get better at learning when it's time to put the arm around someone and when it's time to sort of give someone a kick up the ass. And the people that I work with, like they, they know that I'm a serious guy. Like they're paying me for an outcome and we're on yeah. this journey together and I'm invested in that journey to get them to their goal. So if I've got to sit down with them and say, like, come on, man, what's going on? Like, like we, we want to go at this goal. You told me you want to get to this goal. Like, you, we're, you're letting me down. You're letting yourself down. Let's, let's get to that. We can do this. But, like, what's getting in your way that's stopping you? Like, what are the things, what can we do to make things easier for you? And uh, so just having those recalibration calls are really important to to knowing when you can push someone like I just kind of said a little bit there or be a bit more sympathetic so look if someone's like sister dies and like they go off the plan for a week and stuff like that you got to be like right okay <laughs> let's let's be okay about this here right they're going to have them stall some progress you and there's going to come a point where about like you're going to have to say it and I'm like come on we, we let's get back on our plan now um, if you, if you okay, so you gotta re- re- you've got to be sure that the people know why they're doing the goal. You can make worksheets for them to say, okay, why is this goal important to you? What are the obstacles and the barriers getting in your way? What are we going to do about this? And you have to have a roadmap as to what you're trying to achieve in the short term, the medium term, and the long term. And this is the sort of work that I do with all my guys. When I first get the start, I'm like, okay, what's our roadmap? Where are we going? What are we going to try and achieve? And how are we going to get there? And so I can keep them accountable. So I can say to them, like, look, you said you were going to do this. Like, that's what that we want to sense. do. And then um, and you have to remind them, it's like, okay, well, how does this goal make your life better? How does this achieving this make your life better? And how do you feel once you've achieved that? Do you want to really achieve it? Like, because that visualization is really important as well. Does that make that sense? Makes sense? That makes a lot. It, it makes a lot of sense because it two ways. It makes sense as a previous coach or current coach because I don't really I, I can't coach right now time yeah, but yeah. um it makes sense because even as a coach if I'm listening to this I can hear that okay cool certain times I might have to drop a worksheet because it's not just training and diet and whatsapp messages and checking phones there might be times where I actually have to drop a worksheet where we're actually trying to it's like you said it's behavior it's essentially behavior change as an online coach um yeah. but around the fitness thing so it's not always going to be run to the gym and eat, you know, five broccolis and something. Sometimes you might actually have to write out sure. what your goal is, you know, what's stopping you and like you actually would a normal goal. Um, so I think a lot of people would learn from that as a, as a coach and as a, as a day-to-day person, because you, you might not have a coach, but you still have the same questions, you know, or the same barriers to your goals where you actually have to sit down and say, what can I do? What's stopping me? Et cetera, et cetera. So I think people, both spectrum would definitely benefit from that. Um, one question I've been asking a lot of people, or every Go single ahead. person, two questions I've been asking every single person that features on the podcast. Um, <clears throat> the first one: What makes a great bodybuilder? To you, just to you. It's mindset. It's all mindset. Um, you you have to have it between the ears. Um, and if you've not got out there, then you, you'll just. You'll have all potential in the world, but you'll never fulfill it. So okay, no, sorry, no, no, sorry, no, sorry, sorry. Everyone always says mindset and um and genetics. Taking away mindset and genetics, we need another one. 
Uh, I mean, it's it's a difficult one to take away mindset and genetics because they're, yes. they're both intrinsically linked. I yeah. mean, your mindset is related to your genetics. You can have the genetics for your, your mindset. Um, I mean, maybe more specific question. Then. What what do you think? Um, how? Let me see. Okay. What sets you apart from other bodybuilders? Oh, well, I, I would say mindset. But, okay, I, the, the thing that makes a... To set you apart, okay. Uh, environment. Okay. Environment. That, that's the other part of that equation, isn't it? Of genetics and environment and, and the mindset, I suppose. Uh, it's, it's And being in the right environment around the right people. It's like we said right at the start of this. Full circle, yeah, nice. About, um, having the, the right people around you, the right mentors... Uh, as as well i think a lot of people end up getting stuck in a rut and they stay around the, the same people all the time yeah um, i've been very fortunate to be again teaching being around like olympic athletes and um, being around professionals that work in um high performance sports so i always take a high performance mindset to to what it is and high performance approach to training um which is different from what your average bodybuilder does and most of the time i think my experience with bodybuilders says that they've got great genetics and they just work really fucking hard, <laughs> but they don't necessarily take a high performance approach. So they don't integrate things like sports psychology, um, rehabilitation okay. techniques, high performance nutrition, all these sort of other aspects that professional athletes do. Okay. So you have um, to get, try different environments. So environment, which is, I'm happy we settled for environment because it's a really great full circle to that one. Um, the yep. second question, and it would be insane not to ask the president of WNBF, oh, yeah, but the back. second main question is what is the next step to taking natural bodybuilding? What, what can we do to take natural bodybuilding to the next step in terms of publicity and in terms of growing I, I don't know, from your case as a business audience, as a businessman, growing, uh, you know, ticket sales, maximizing ticket sales, uh, which is, this, and participate and participations, which is obviously the main two things that you guys uh, would look at as well. So in terms of you as a coach, what would be the next, as a, as a president of WNBF, what would be the, the next big thing? It might not come from you guys. It might be something that has to happen as, overall. Um, it might be an idea or something that needs to be done, but, what would fill up the tickets more and get more participants on stage from your point of view? Well, I can tell you what we're going to do is our next step. Our, our next step is going to be a pro show. So we're going to do the uh, Pro Men's Physique. We're going to have that this year. Uh, WNBF Europe is going to have, I think, four this, pro shows. This year? Did you say this year? 2023, 2023. okay. So WNBF Europe is going to have um, multiple pro shows in it next year and that will make it... Uh, even more exciting. So Spain, Germany, France uh, are all going to have pro shows along with uh, Switzerland as well and the UK. So that grows the scene and grows the elite performance pathway from there. I think natural bodybuilding, if we can get it to the world game, because that's the pathway for the Olympic Games, that would be the, the next thing from, from there. But um, just as a sort of uh, philosophical perspective if we can get everyone on the same page all the natural bodybuilding organizations and i say natural because drug free is different from that yeah oh drug so free yeah different. yeah yeah okay drug free yeah let's say drug free i mean natural if anyone is, yeah, yeah well this is just yeah, a, a, yeah. Oh, technical We get everyone on side from, from that perspective. But if we want to grow the sport, that needs to happen. Um, the pro shows will, will definitely help us uh, from, from that one. But the more exposure we can get around natural bodybuilding, the better. Hence why I'm doing these podcasts. The more things we can do in terms of the media, uh, the better. Yeah. I want to speak. You're smiling. Money. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm with you. I, I recall you said uh, some time ago, Dimitri, we could market it in terms of like how Nike do it. Or Adidas, and you've got like you've got these stories on Instagram. I would, I would YouTube, love to. And you're following the path of the guys. Yeah, goes. like we want to do that stuff. It's just it costs money to to be I able know, to do that. Stuff. I know, I know. But if we want to do it, if, I think that's what, the I, help. what I had in mind was essentially was essentially a live reporting of WNBF 
if that makes sense. Yeah. So a, a host and a videographer, and essentially, whilst all the winners do get their interviews in that kind of in the kind of like winners box, all the other all the other eighty plus participants that put in the same sixteen eighteen weeks would have a chance to you know speak about their process. Their process. The audiences would have a chance to speak about their experience and whatnot. And parents do talk about. Ooh, I think all these kind of things would. I think seeing someone on stage is very niche, but hearing parents and other people, it brings in a different type of um, community-like spirit into the school and 